Welcome to the Alpha Training and Consulting's online training program. Today we're going to go over the question, measure, measurement resolution versus measurement sensitivity. What's the difference between resolution and sensitivity? All right, please keep this in mind for any of your ASQ uh, preparation training needs. We've been preparing students for ASQ certifications for over 20 years. We've become very good at it, and we would love to have you as one of our students. All right, with that being said, let's go back to the question, what's the difference between measurement resolution and measurement sensitivity? Well, let's first talk about resolution. Resolution is the smallest increment that can be read from the measuring instrument. In most cases, we desire higher measurement resolution. Higher measurement resolution is a good thing. Lower measurement resolution, not such a good thing. Let me read it again. Resolution is the smallest increment that can be read from the measuring instrument. All right, let's go to the whiteboard, look at a measuring instrument, describe resolution as we look at that. All right, here we are at the whiteboard, and there's my tape measure. And uh, resolution is the smallest increment you can read from this. And I won't have you count all those marks between the inch there, uh, but there's 16 of them. So I can see this 1 16th of an inch. Now, this is considered an analog measuring device versus digital, right? But this is analog. So analog, in many standards, this is acceptable. I'm not saying all, I'm just saying some. In an analog device, they claim that you can judge halfway between there. So it'd be a 30-second resolution if you accepted that assumption. If not, you may decide, no, I don't want to use that assumption trying to figure out right in the middle of those two. So I'll call it a sixteenth of an inch resolution instrument because that's as fine as I can read from this instrument. That is called resolution. Okay, now let's go back and discuss what sensitivity is. Okay, here we are back at our PowerPoint. Resolution, I just want to read it one more time, is the smallest increment that can be read from the measuring instrument. Now let's look at sensitivity. Sensitivity is the smallest amount applied that can change the reading of the instrument by its least significant digit. Okay, so let's say I had a piece of metal, okay, and I'm going to heat it up, and I know when I heat it up, it's going to grow. And so let's this time uh, imagine we have a digital instrument, and I have calipers, and the calipers covering the whole thing, and I start heating this metal, and it starts growing. But it doesn't grow a lot, but enough uh, that it does change dimension. But the instrument doesn't read it. But as soon as it grows enough that it clicks and changes, that's the sensitivity. Let me read that again. Sensitivity is the smallest amount applied that can change the reading of the instrument by its least significant digit. All right. So you can compare the two. Smallest increment that can be read from the measuring instrument versus the smallest amount applied that can change the reading of the instrument by its least significant digit. So they're pretty close, and I know you're thinking, well, they're the same thing because uh, sensitivity is based on the resolution. In many cases, that is the case, but not in all. So that's why we have the two definitions. All right, sensitivity, mathematical definition, the ratio of the change in the output of the instrument to a change of the input or measured quantity. In most cases, we desire high sensitivity as a good thing, low sensitivity, not so good. Here it is mathematically. Sensitivity equals change in output over change in input. Now let's go into effective resolution. The ability of a measurement system to detect variation for a given application, effective resolution is measured by the 10 to 1 concept or number of distinct categories. Okay, so effective resolution, let me explain it this way. Effective resolution, your instrument is sensitive enough or has enough resolution that you can pick up on the variability. So let's say I'm going to measure the diameter of this pin. Okay. The diameter of the pin, but my resolution is, I don't know, uh, one meter. Okay, we'll go to metric, one meter. Okay, what is the value of this going to be? If the most sensitive thing I can read is one meter, you're going to get all zeros. Okay, so let's go to the whiteboard and discuss this in a little more detail. All right, here we are at the whiteboard. So what if I had a hundred of these 
and uh, my resolution of the instrument was one meter. I don't register everything zero until I get one meter and above, then it starts registering. Okay, so this would be zero. And I can measure a hundred, hundred of them, and what would the distribution look like? Straight line, zero. Now, sometimes as a uh, quality engineer, Six Sigma Black Belt, whatever, quality professional, you'll collect data, you'll put it in a histogram, that's what you see. That means you don't have enough measurement resolution or enough measurement sensitivity, whichever one you want to talk about. Now, let's say I measure this with another instrument, but now the resolution is one thousandth of a millimeter. Whoa, that's pretty pretty uh, good resolution, isn't it? We went from one meter to one thousandth of a millimeter. Whoa, that's pretty sensitive. That's pretty uh, good resolution. All right, now what am I going to see when I start measuring this? These diameters of these 100 pins. Oh, now we can start seeing the variation in the part. Now we can start seeing the shape of the distribution. And you're right. And when you're, when you're solving problems as a consultant, sometimes you see this. Sometimes you see a histogram that really is pretty. It looks like that because there's a lot of measurement resolution. Uh, but sometimes you'll see this. Maybe you only have... How many bars is that in my histogram? One, two, three, four, five. Okay. That doesn't mean there's not a part of one of these pins that falls right here in this value, but I don't have enough uh, resolution in the instrument, so it's either going to go here or it's going to go here. And that's why you have these spaces in between is because of resolution. Generally speaking, as a consultant, if I can get five or six bars, how many bars do I have on this histogram? One, two, three, four, five. I can, in most cases, I feel comfortable using that uh, for data analysis. Okay, but if I have fewer than five, then I don't feel too good about it. It's not real good data. And of course, this is absolute garbage here. But you'd be surprised how many clients spend, who knows how many hundreds of thousands of dollars over the year collecting data, and this is the distribution. <laughs> The resolution, it's ineffective resolution. This would be effective resolution. Of course, I could add other bars here and make it even more better effective resolution. So hopefully that makes sense. Let's go back to the PowerPoint. All right, here we are back at the PowerPoint. Now we're going to discuss again. I'm just going to read through it again. Effective resolution, the ability of a measurement system to detect variation. You can start seeing the histogram starting to take the shape of the distribution for a given application. Effective resolution is measured by the 10 to 1 concept or the number of distinct categories. One way of thinking of the number of distinct categories is how many columns did I have on my histogram. I'm going to get more specific about that later, but that's how you can think of it. And I remember I said you need at least five bars on your histogram to make it worth anything. The 10 to 1 rule, on the other hand, is uh, if you have a drawing and it says plus minus five one hundredths. Okay, you have to measure it with something with ten times that resolution, which would be five thousandths. So if it was five hundredths, ten times more resolution would be five thousandths. That's the ten to one rule. If you use the ten to one rule, you're going to get good effective resolution on those uh, on those diagrams. So that's what we're looking at. You can use the ten to one or NDC of five or better. Most organizations consider an NDC or number of distinct categories of five to be acceptable for variables, data analytics, for example, capability studies, SPC, and etc. And so let's uh, dig into this a little more. I want to discuss a little bit more of what NDC actually is. All right, now we're going to dig in deeper into effective resolution, NDC, those types of terms. And I take all this from Minitab. Minitab's help menu is really, really good. And so we're going to refer to that to dig into a little greater detail on what uh, NDC means and effective resolution also. So what is the number of distinct categories or NDC? Remember, we like NDC of five or greater. And you can think of it this way. This is the easiest way is how many columns does your measurement system create on the histogram? 
If it's five, that's the number of distinct categories is five. So that's the easiest way, but now we're going to get into the weeds a little deeper. The number of distinct categories is a metric that is used in gauge r and r studies to identify a measurement system's ability to detect a difference in the measured characteristic. The number of distinct categories represents the number of non-overlapping confidence intervals that spans the range of product variation. Okay, so what we're going to compare here is product variation. Remember we had uh, sigma of the parts, right? And then we had sigma of measurement. So they're comparing sigma of the parts to sigma of the measurements, seeing how many times the sigma of measurement fits into sigma of parts. That's really what it's telling us here. The number of distinct categories also represents the number of groups within your process that your measurement system can discern. So that was my definition, number of columns on your histogram, number of distinct categories, Columns on the histogram also represents the number of groups within your process data that your measurement system can discern. So there you go. But how does Minitab calculate it? Well, okay, let's dig a little deeper into the woods here. Minitab calculates the number of distinct categories by dividing the standard deviation for the parts by the standard deviations of the gauge or gauge R and R or sigma of measurement. Then multiplies that by 1.41, which is the square root of 2. Minitab then truncates this value. When the value is less than 1, Minitab sets the number of distinct categories equal to 1. So that'd be one what? One column on your histogram, as I mentioned earlier. So the number of categories that are calculated depends on the ratio of the variability in the measured part, sigma of the parts, and the variability in the measurement system. So there you go. And uh, you may need to listen to that a couple times. I know I've had to do that in many of these vocabulary studies. Guidelines for the number of distinct categories. Uh, what are they? The Measurement System Analysis, Manual 1, published by the Automobile Industry Action Group, or AIAG, uh, which is what most people follow. The automotive industry has done a great job of setting standards for many things, including measurement. And everyone else says, why do we need to reinvent the wheel? We'll just tag on to the automotive industry's definition and recommendations. And I think that's smart because the industry is very good at using statistics in, in processes. Okay, so AIAG recommends what? That five or more categories indicates an acceptable measurement system. So if you're going to say something is measurable from the NDC standpoint, it should be five or greater. Uh, according to AIAG, and that's what most uh, companies follow, by the way. Usually when the number of distinct categories is less than two, the measurement system is of no value for controlling the process because it cannot distinguish between parts. When the number of distinct categories of two, you can split the parts into two, only two groups, such as high and low. When the number of distinct categories is three, you can split the parts into three groups, low, middle, and high. So maybe that data is still valuable to you. Uh, that's attribute data, right? One or two, uh, or two subgroups, pass, fail, for example, but three is even a little better, low, middle, high. So you may be able to use low, middle, high to help you in a statistical analysis, and you may be able to use pass, fail. But if you're going to do variables data, objective problem solving, you should have an NDC of five or greater. All right, congratulations, you made it through this discussion. Hopefully you can discern the difference between um, resolution and sensitivity in measurement now. And uh, here's all the classes we teach. And we have a website for every class. It's where you go to register and pay for the class, learn more about the class. I usually have at least 10 videos associated with all these classes at those websites. So put this on hold, write down the one you're interested in, go sign up for a class. We'd love to have you as a student. Thank you, and have a great day. Goodbye.